In this video, we are going to look at a new possibility for code pipeline to natively deploy something on EC2 instances. This can be used to roll out a certain set of sources or tools or um, common information that needs to go into a huge set of your EC2 instances. It's pretty neat. Let's have a look and let's see if we can actually directly make that work. Oh, let's get in here. Let's try to set up a new um, pipeline that is able to deploy to um, an EC2 instance. So we're going to go over here. We're going to call this pipeline deploy to EC2. And we are going to create a new service role. Uh, we can now choose the source provider here. Once again, we are going to use the uh, connection that is already set up. And we are actually going to be boring because we're going to use the same uh, Helm example that we have. We're going to use main. Uh, we are going to now click next. We are once again going to skip the build stage over here. Uh, we are going to skip the test stage. Uh, we are going to choose over here the possibility to deploy to EC2, which now gives me a lot of information and a lot of possibilities. As you can see, this is now going to use the source artifacts again. Instance type, we want to use EC2 because we don't want to use uh, all of the EC2 instances. We just want to choose some of them. So this is going to be interesting now because we're going to use instances that are actually created through EKS Auto Mode. I don't know if that's actually going to work, but we are going to choose and target all of the Kubernetes cluster, all of the nodes that are of the, that are from this Kubernetes cluster over here. It matched three instances. This makes sense. A target directory uh, is going to be a home EC2 user uh, dev uh, CICD on AWS. Uh, we're not going to be uh, adding a prescript or postscript. And this option now you would be able to not in the upload dear, but in the source file, right? I could have scripts that would modify my deployment based on information that I have on the EC2 instance. Think of you're using this to roll out specific tools or other things, right? You want to script that. You can use this then to configure this for the instance that you target that, that the script is running on, right? By accessing the instance metadata or things like that. Let's see if this is actually going to work. Postscript is required. Hmm. This is interesting. Why is Postscript required? Okay, let's go and do. Okay, let's just add something. I know that this is not going to work. Here we will see that there is possibilities to choose percentages of rollout, right? Um, that can deploy in parallel. As you saw, we have three instances over here. So I'm going to put this at 67%. So to be able to roll to out two at the same time. Um, targets, targets with load balancing, there is no load balancing for these targets. So let's see what happens if I set this up. Let's review this. So we know that this script does not yet exist, right? So we know that the post script is going to fail. But I at least want to see if I am able to execute this pipeline against EC2 nodes that have been created from auto mode, which is interesting because if you don't know what auto mode is, auto mode is a way of AWS actually managing your Kubernetes nodes and your Kubernetes clusters for you. That means that if I'm able to tamper those EC2 nodes using code deploy, I don't really like that, right? So let's see what happens over here. Okay. Um, we see that our service role does not get out of uh, default uh, the permissions that we need. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, modify this role. Once again, here, I would love to have a link to directly change this role because now I need to go to IAM, I need to search that role, uh, which is obviously wrong the way that I copied it over here. Let's see if I can find that role. And yes, this is new. I didn't reload the page. So here's that one. Um, seems like I will now need to add SSM send command possibilities uh, to this. So let's go ahead and to this role as we're trying to demo this, we're going to add a new manage policies, which is going to be giving us the SSM AC2 role for SSM. SSM full access. This is going to be the one that we want to add over here. 
And let's see if that moves us ahead. So it's interesting that this was not mentioned in the tutorial, right? Um, so let's go back to the overview and let's try to release another change. Okay, so I think that this is going to fail now. Because those instances are not able to be managed by SSM. Let's try if we can actually tweak that. Um, so this is the role that is being used for the for for the ETA, for, for the auto node ones. I'm gonna add this role, which is the uh, SSM managed instance core, and let's see if this is now going to help us to move ahead. And if not, I'm gonna stop the 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 recording for a second, and I'm gonna try to fix this without. Right. So I'm kind of hacking my way into the EC2 nodes that are being set up by EKS Auto Mode. Okay, so I'm going to try to fix this and then I'll continue the recording. After spending about half an hour to trying to hack me into the EC2 nodes um, owned by uh, EKS Automode um, with setting up different VPC endpoints and stuff like that, I kind of gave up. Uh, and now I'm going to use uh, two, three instances that I uh, recently created. Uh, that uh, are going to have a different tag. Uh, the tag that is going to be used over here is code pipeline managed and I'm going to put it a uh, yes because that's what I put over here. Uh, they are small EC2 instances um, and we're going to try to do the deployment with uh, the code pipeline over here. Cool, I saved the changes. Um, this should automatically trigger a redeployment of that piece. And uh, let's try to redeploy that. So I'm now accessing these three instances that I have set up right, um, to deploy some stuff over there. As you can see, they have a public IP address. This will obviously be gone the moment that you access that. We will now see that this deploy step is hopefully going to run. There's no information over here. So this error message is kind of going on my nerves, right? So let's try to see if this is now possible to access these three with SSM or not. Okay, gonna try to resolve this. Okay, it took me another few minutes to get this going, but now we can try again as I finally am able to connect to the EC2 instances that I set up using SSM. So I released a new change and hopefully we will now see that this is actually going to work. Okay, so we found multiple EC2 instances over here. Uh, we can see that it's getting the artifacts uh, directly and it's unzipping that. And it looks like it's already it's still running. Okay, so this SSM role now doesn't have access to uh, download stuff from S3. So I'm going to fix that uh, by going to this and giving this role the S3 full access. And I think now we're getting somewhere, right? Let's go back to the pipeline. Let's execute this again and create a new change, um, release a new change. So what we already learned is that the code uh, pipeline uh, option here uses SSM under the hood. That, that means that if you have are in an organization that it does not allow to use SSM, then you cannot use this functionality. Or you need to get an security approval to actually get your um, SSM options enabled for your EC2 nodes that you want to manage through code pipeline. <clears throat> I need to admit that this still takes too long for me. I'm a very impatient person, right? And if you look at how GitHub action ha behaves compared to code pipeline, it always feels like way faster. Now we should be able to see that this the repository has been created. So let's have a look uh, on the EC2 instance itself. Uh, this is interesting. Where are we? Oh. AC2 user. Oh. Okay, there we have the bucket, uh, the folder that has been created. 
here we now see everything that is actually part of our Git repository. So it seems like that worked. Now it's going to execute that script. Uh, that means it's going to execute it as uh, the EC2 user, as it looks like. This is interesting. What's the user that is going to be executed? Okay, so this file doesn't exist, which is good. Now, after deploy failed, which is good. Now, let's try to see if we can find out as which user this piece actually runs. So let's go into the repository, uh, which is going to be this one. I need to make sure that I am in the right account. And over here, let's go and... Um, who am I? And then let's see. I want to directly commit this to the main branch. Yes, this is good. Okay, so now this should directly trigger an execution of the pipeline. Oh, yeah, it did. And this also showed my change over here, right? So over here, this shows the change that I just did with the push. So pipeline triggered directly as expected. Um, it's now going to once again take a little while. The question is if I'm actually going to see the log files from the script. This is going to be an interesting thing to see. But what we already saw is that this worked, right? So now... Um, Oh, yeah, I placed it in the wrong file. So let's quickly fix that by uh, changing the pipeline over here. Sorry, where's my pipeline? I'm going to need to edit the pipeline because the deploy step over here, the stage, I set the wrong script name um, or better the other way around. Um, I placed it in the wrong folder. Let's go ahead and do that. And with saving, this should now directly execute another step. Charts. Hello, world. Good. So the script is now here. That means that hopefully this is also going to execute. Now, I still don't understand why the postscript is something that is going to be uh, required for executing the deploy on EC2. And I don't understand why code pipeline is that slow. Okay, so once again, Johannes failed. Let's go back to fixing that. So it still feels like code pipeline is too slow in reacting, right? So we now see that this has been um, successful for two instances. Um, there is now one pending instance, which is now being rolled out uh, on this pending instance. It's uh, now also going to do the download and it's then going to execute that piece. The reason for that is that we actually um, executed that. Um, so what, what, while, we, while we look at that, this is interesting, right? Over here it says SSM command is the ID is this one, right? Um, so uh, we should now be able to look at this SSM command and then see hopefully the user that executed this. So let's go to S SSM quickly. And let's look at uh, run command, which should be the one that is being used um, over here. Uh, we should now be able to see the success of those. And yes, we do. Um, so we see that this users run uh, that under the hood. Uh, we should be able to see the view output now. Oh, there is no view output. So this would be interesting to see now. How do I get the log files of the relevant pieces? Yeah. <laughs> 
And this, once again, it feels like this is not completely thought through, right? So we can see the commands over here because the commands have been executed based on what uh, code pipeline does, but I don't see any possibility or reference on actually to the relevant uh, um, to the to the relevant um, uh, script right? so it's to, to the relevant code pipeline steps so this feels totally odd right with a, if I look at this uh, I would love to see well I, here I see the log files right I see the log files of my scripts right but why can I not see that this one tri was triggered from code pipeline I can't understand that so um, we were, will now finally see that the deployment was succeeded. Uh, we will also be. We will also see that the three instances that we have were triggered right after another, which is pretty good. Um, and now, uh, with that, we have shown that the pipeline deployment to EC2 actually works, and we can use that to automate pre-processing, setting up some of the instances, which was a capability to, that was also available before. Uh, but now I can embed that into my deployment pipeline and combine that with other parts of the execution, which is pretty neat. Okay, within the past few minutes, we have looked at how to use code pipeline to orchestrate the deployment of uh, stuff of things into EC2 instances. Uh, we have seen that under the hood, this functionality uses systems manager. We have seen that Johannes doesn't know how to set up system manager properly. We have also learned that it is not possible to automate uh, setting up uh, EC2 nodes managed by EKS auto mode um, as the EC, uh, the SSM client is blocked over there. Um, we have then also learned that code pipeline is still too, sm too slow. Uh, that means it doesn't react as fast as you would expect it from a CI CD pipeline. The outputs are not being progressed as expected. We have also seen that uh, the code pipeline team collaborated with the SSM team, systems manager team, to actually make the functionality work, which per is, is a good thing on the one side. Uh, on the other side, there is a few flaws that I think that we're missing. So the setup of system manager from code pipeline needs to be improved. Uh, if you have an organization that doesn't uh, use uh, system manager, doesn't allow to use system manager, that it function, then this functionality of code pipeline is actually not going to work for you. And last but not least, come on, guys, if you integrate something, you need to somehow link that in the different consoles, right? We need to make sure that the SSM command that is being executed can be tied back to the pipeline execution. Otherwise, we're just building two different systems that don't really work together, where the end user doesn't really see the dependencies and you're not able to track the log files properly. You're not able to make the connections. This is not really an integrated system. And I think that this is something that can be improved. Um, with that, thank you so much. I hope that you uh, keep uh, leave me some comments and some thoughts around how did how you liked this video and how you liked what we tried to achieve today. Uh, if you have feedback on the fun new functionality itself, please let me know as well, and I will forward that to the corresponding code pipeline team. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, see you back again soon.